بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, all his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every single one of us. My brothers and sisters, the days and the nights are not equal when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to the power of the dua that you and I make. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept certain days and nights better than others. For example, we are all aware that the night of Laylatul Qadr, the most powerful night from amongst the nights of the year, and this is towards the end of Ramadan. Similarly, when it comes to the days, these 10 days that we are in right now, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are the most noble, the highest, the loftiest of days. And the confusion that some have, they forget that there is a difference between night and day. Some people say, well, if these days are very powerful, what about Laylatul Qadr? Well, if you were to pause for a moment, Laylatul Qadr is an evening, it's a night, it's not a day. So that's the difference. Regarding the days, these are the most powerful days of the year. Regarding the nights, it is definitely Laylatul Qadr, closely followed by the eaves of the two Eids that we do have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us His mercy and His blessings. Ameen. Similarly, if we take a look at the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has kept it such through His divine wisdom that every single one of us has needs. These needs, yes, He has granted us the physical capacity sometimes to fulfill some of them. But if you were to look at a lot of these needs, we are incapable of fulfilling these needs except by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, every single need is such that if it was not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mercy and His gift that He has bestowed upon us, we would never be able to achieve anything. It is He who gave us the brains we have, the energy we have, the physical ability, the capacity we have, the sustenance, the families and so on. It is Allah alone. So none of us should ever think that it is because of a goodness of our own that we have achieved. Rather, it is definitely only and solely by the blessing and fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His virtue. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to be worshipped in a specific way. One of the ways He wants to be worshipped and He has sent messengers to teach us how He wants to be worshipped. For this reason, it is wrong for us to engage in acts of worship that were not delivered by the messengers who came with the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of them is salah. Salah is the five daily prayers that we have. I cannot fulfill the salah as per my own whims and fancies. I need to make sure I fulfill it as per the instruction of the one who brought it to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, the number of units, what I should read in every unit, what I should say when I bow down, when I prostrate, all this is governed and determined by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was given it by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ultimately it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, regarding some aspects, there is a leeway. Regarding some aspects, there is no leeway. I give you an example. When it comes to reading, you have to read the Qur'an in salah. When you are standing, you have to. What exactly to read? You read Surah Al-Fatiha and after that you have a choice. There is a leeway. What should you read? The hadith says, فَقْرَأْ مَا تَيَسَّرَ مَعَكَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Read whatever is easy for you from the Qur'an. You read one long verse, three short verses as a minimum. So there is a leeway regarding what to read, but I need to read from the Qur'an. Similarly, when I am changing positions, I am taught to say Allahu Akbar. And I am taught to say, for example, Sami Allahu Liman Hamida. This is quite specific. When it comes, for example, to sacrificing the animal, there is a specific way of doing it. I cannot just begin by 
injuring the animal and waiting for it to die and claim that I said the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not good enough. If it is a sacrificial animal and not an animal that is hunted, there is a specific way of doing it. And if it is a hunted animal, the way might change slightly, but the core remains the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Similarly, one of the ways Allah wants to be worshipped is that he creates needs within us that we will have to call out to him regarding. I have no option but to call out to Allah, to make dua to him. I need to call out to him to say, oh Allah, grant me goodness, grant me happiness, grant me sustenance, protect my children, give me offspring, grant me a blessed home, grant me Jannah, grant me paradise. I need to ask Allah and Allah gets happy when you ask him so much so that one narration says, Addu'a'u huwa al-ibadah. Worship in actual fact is to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the other way around. By calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are in actual fact worshipping Allah. Because when I ask him for something, I'm acknowledging he is the greatest. I'm acknowledging he has what I want. And this is why when we associate or when someone associates partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he becomes very angry because it is an insult to Allah to ask from someone else what Allah owns. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all forms of shirk and polytheism. I mean, so it is important for us to call out for our needs. Some of these needs we find ourselves quite helpless when it comes to uh, certain matters. For example, and I'm just going to give you an example. If the economy begins to, for example, slide and we start calling out to Allah, nothing seems to be happening. People are struggling financially and they call out to Allah. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Not at all. Don't think I've got a brain, I've got a mind. Don't worry, I'll make a plan. No matter what you have, yes, you may make a plan, but ask Allah, continue asking Allah, not just for yourself, but even for others. So we are taught that when you ask for others, then the angels say Ameen to the dua saying, Walaka mithluhu, and may you have similar to what you are asking for your brother. So if I were to say, oh Allah, that man is ill, grant him good health, I'm automatically making a dua for myself. If I were to say, oh Allah, that man is poor, grant him wealth, I'm automatically making dua for myself. This is why do not be selfish when it comes to dua. You don't know the more powerful dua, even for yourself, is when you supplicate for others. May Allah make it, make it easy for us to do that. We become selfish sometimes only asking for ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Similarly, when it comes to calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is very, very important to go through the blessed words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the best of creation. He is the best of creation, the most noble of all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To say his name without saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may blessings and salutations be upon him. May the blessings of Allah be upon him. That would be an insult if one were to leave that out intentionally. So such a noble man, such a great person, such a, a great creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is important for us to go through the words that he has uttered when he called out. And something very interesting we will find is when we look at these words, some of it, we will be wondering why did he have to call out for this? He did not have bad qualities, bad habits, but we find him saying, Oh Allah, protect me from laziness. Oh Allah, protect me, for example, from being miserly, from cowardice, for example. Let's take a look at some of these narrations. There is a narration of Aisha radiallahu anha, a very important narration which teaches us how to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason I make mention of this is this is the season of dua. At the moment, we are in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. It is a season of calling out, call out to Allah and continue repeating your dua. In our language, we would say like a madman. A madman meaning you just keep on repeating the same thing. Imagine if I were talking to you and I kept repeating the same thing, you would be irritated. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's an act of worship to repeat things sometimes. The reason is you are acknowledging your desperation. Oh Allah, grant me. Oh Allah, grant me. Two minutes later, oh Allah, grant me. And you're saying the same thing. By the time you repeat it a million times, do you really think that the mercy of Allah would dictate that you're not supposed to have it? Subhanallah. A million is not actually a, a, a figure. It's just something I mentioned. So Aisha radiallahu anha says, one day I was in prayer and the Prophet sallallahu wanted something. So he called out to me, he realized she's in prayer and he said, Oh Aisha, 
let your dua, meaning the supplication, be the dua which is very broad in meaning, yet it is short in words. So Aisha radiallahu anha says, when I completed my prayer, I turned to him and I, and I asked him, can you tell me which is it of the prayers or how should I supplicate in a way that the wording will be concise and at the same time, the meaning will be broad. So he gives an example. Let's listen to these words. He says, O oh Aisha, say, Allahumma inni as'aluka min al khayri kullihi ajilihi wa ajilihi ma alimtu minhu wa ma lam a'lam. O oh Allah, I ask you all goodness. I ask you all goodness, that which is immediate and that which is to follow later. I want the goodness now and later on as well. That which I know and that which I don't know. Amazing. Look at this. So you're asking for all goodness. Sometimes I don't know that this is good for me. But because of this dua, Allah will give it to me. It's amazing. And then he continues to say, وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الشَّرِّ كُلِّهِ عَاجِلِهِ وَآجِلِهِ مَا عَلِمْتُ مِنْهُ وَمَا لَمْ أَعْلَمْ And I seek refuge in you, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from all evil, that which is immediate and that which is to come later on. That which I know and that which I don't know. So look at how the balance is struck. On one hand, she is taught to ask for all goodness now and later, whether I know it or don't. And on the other hand, she is taught to seek protection from all evil because my brothers and sisters, all of us, as much as we would love goodness, we would also love to be protected from harm. Amazing. What's the point of earning a million dollars? and then suffering a loss of two million. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Then he continues to say, وَأَسْأَلُكَ الْجَنَّةَ وَمَا قَرَّبَ إِلَيْهَا مِنْ قَوْلٍ أَوْ عَمَلٍ And I ask you paradise. Now, al-jannah is paradise. This shows us that you don't only ask for the dunya. You're going to be living here for a few more years. People have left already younger than you. People have left wealthier and healthier than you and I. So we need to make sure we ask regarding what is to follow as well. So he says, say, Oh Allah, I ask you Jannah and any deed or statement that will draw me closer to paradise. Make it easy for me to say things and do things that will make it easy for me to gain paradise. What a beautiful wording. And then he says, وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ النَّارِ وَمَا قَرَّبَ إِلَيْهَا مِنْ قَوْلٍ أَوْ عَمَلٍ And O oh Allah, I seek your protection from hellfire and any statement or deed that will bring me close to hellfire. Look at the balance. First, goodness and then protection from evil. Then paradise and then protection from hellfire. And then he continues to say, Say, وَأَسْأَلُكَ مِمَّا سَأَلَكَ بِهِ مُحَمَّدٌ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. I ask you all the goodness in one narration, al-khair, meaning all the goodness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, asked of you, I'm asking the same. Subhanallah, powerful wording. And then he says, وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِمَّا تَعَوَّذَ بِهِ مُحَمَّدٌ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. And I seek protection or I seek refuge in you from all the evil that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sought protection from throughout his life, obviously. Then he caps it, he ends it by saying, وَمَا قَضَيْتَ لِي مِنْ قَضَاءٍ فَجْعَلْ عَاقِبَتَهُ رُشْدًا Whatever you have decreed for me, O oh Allah, let the end of it be goodness. I might not understand why I'm going through difficulty right now. I might not understand the situation I'm in right now. Grant me the patience. Ya Allah, ensure that the end of all of this is something really good. A person who is sick and ill, it is reported when they see the reward that is in store for them in the hereafter, they will be so impressed, so happy, so glad that they, they may even say, why didn't you keep me sick and ill for longer? Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that I could achieve such a great reward through the sabr and the endurance. So Allah knows why you are going through the matters that you may be going through. Remember, it is Allah who knows this. Therefore, continue asking Allah, Oh Allah, whatever you have decreed for me, make the end of it filled with goodness, O oh Allah. This narration is reported by Al-Bukhari in a compilation known as Al-Adab Al-Mufrad. 
that he has compiled. Another hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he says, and these are beautiful words again of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. the reason I mentioned them, let's try and call out using the same blessed words. These are powerful words. They're not my words, your words. They are the words of the most noble of all prophets, the greatest of all creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He asked using these words and he was granted using the same words. So it would be considered a sunnah or a practice of following the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if we were to use the same words. He says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal kasal. Oh Allah, I seek I seek refuge in you from incapacity, inability, disability, al-ajz, when someone is unable, incapable. Say for example, a disabled person, they are totally disabled. Oh Allah, protect me from that and protect me from laziness. Now Muhammad sallallahu was not disabled in any way. He was never unable to do something in any way. But at the same time, he asks for this so that we can follow these beautiful words. Then he says, Oh Allah, protect me from kasal, meaning laziness, subhanallah. Something we desperately need with the new generation. Oh Allah, protect us from laziness. Muhammad sallallahu was the most energetic. He had the power of between 30 and 300 men, depending on the narrations, meaning a lot of men. But he's still saying, oh Allah, protect me from laziness. Amazing. Every day he used to call out using these words. And then, wal jubni, wal haram. Oh Allah, protect me from stinginess, miserliness. Let me be generous, oh Allah. And protect me from old age. You know, in old age, when you become dependent on someone else. Oh Allah, protect me from that. And oh Allah, I seek your protection. Wa a'udhu bika min fitnatil mahya wal mamat. From the tests of life and death. And I seek your protection from the tests of the grave. We're going to be asked questions in the grave. There is going to be torment in the grave for those who deserve it. There is going to be goodness in the grave for those who deserve it. We are seeking protection from the evil and asking Allah for the goodness. Another narration of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an. Something really beautiful. He says, I heard the messenger saying, and I heard him saying this more than once. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hamm wal-huzn. O Allah, I seek protection in you from worries. Imagine worrying, hum, something that overtakes your mind, I'm worried. He was not worried at all. But the reason why he uttered these words is so that we could not only get a reward for uttering the same words, but so that we are taught how to ask Allah, O Allah, whatever my worry is, you know. Help me, I seek refuge in you from the evil known as Alham, worries. And he says, Alhammi wal hazan or al huzn. They are both narrations. If you say al huzn, it refers to sadness. And if you say al hazan, it refers to difficulty, hardship. Hazan is something hard, and huzn is something sad. So oh Allah, protect me from sadness, protect me from worry. You know, make me happy, a person who is happy and you handle all my affairs. Basically, that's what it is when you're asking Allah protection from worry. Then he says, Wal ajzi, inability, protect me from inability. Once again, Wal kasal, once again, protect me from laziness. Wal jubni, wal bukhl. He says, Oh Allah, protect me from being miserly. Protect me from cowardice and being miserly. Wa ghalabatid daini wa qahri rijal. Oh Allah. Protect me from debts overtaking me. You know, a person incurs a debt and that debt overtakes them. They cannot pay back. So now there is a disaster because when a person is overtaken by debt, it affects everything, their health, their mind, their happiness and their surroundings completely. So this is a powerful dua that needs to be repeated every single day. Oh Allah, protect us from debt overtaking us and from the men overpowering us, which means the enemy in the case of war or in any other case, those who intend harm, oh Allah, never let them overpower us. What a beautiful dua. And the last dua that I want to mention for today is in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, where he says, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يدعو فيقول The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to make a dua and he used to say, which means he used to supplicate and he used to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka. Oh Allah, I am asking you. What do you think he was asking him? 
He says, أَسْأَلُكَ الْهُدَى I ask you to guide me. Subhanallah, the one who brought the guidance to us is, is saying, Oh Allah, grant, us, grant me guidance. Amazing. It definitely proves that these words were more for us than anything else. He is saying, Oh Allah, I ask you al-huda, which means to guide me, guidance. What tuqa? A tuqa means I ask you piety. The most pious of the lot is saying, Oh Allah, I ask you piety. And from this we learn, my brothers and sisters, something very important. Don't think that because you have something, you should not be asking Allah for that same item. Thank Allah for it. Oh Allah, you've blessed me with eyesight. I thank you for eyesight. Oh Allah, strengthen my eyesight. Grant me good eyesight, even though your eyesight is the best. But continue asking Allah. We learn it from this narration and similar narrations. The same applies, you have wealth. Well, when it comes to wealth, no matter how much you have, you still say, oh Allah, grant me more. So that's fine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us goodness. But you have every form of goodness and it's important for us to acknowledge it, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he used to say, As'aluka al-huda wa tuqa wa al-afaf. I ask you chastity. The most chaste from the whole lot is asking, Oh Allah, I ask you chastity, protect me, safeguard me. Don't tempt me, oh Allah. Meaning, don't allow temptations to overtake me, oh Allah. That's a proper wording. Then, wal-ghina, wal-afafa, wal-ghina. Oh Allah, I ask you independence. Meaning, independence from others, from the creatures. Don't let me depend on anyone. My dependence must be only and solely upon you. So these are some of the powerful duas. It's important for us to go through them, to listen to them, to call out whether it is in the Arabic language preferably or in any language that you understand. There is no restriction when it comes to language, when you are supplicating, calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But remember, this is the season of dua. Do good deeds, seek a lot of forgiveness. For those who seek forgiveness, there is a greater likelihood that their supplications are answered because they clear their slate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something that is far more deserving of the response than a person who is sinning morning, evening or throughout the day and night and they continue asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his mercy, he may still give them. But it is only correct for us to ask Allah's forgiveness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.